Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, June 20. The late former Prime Minister Edward Siaga was yesterday remembered for giving unyielding and sterling service to Jamaica in and outside the Parliament of the country. 19 members of the Senate and House of Representatives, along with two former Prime Ministers, paid tribute to Mr. Siaga in a special joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament. The tributes were led by Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who remarked that Edward Siaga was one of the fathers of the nation. He was central in the campaign to leave the Federation. He was a framer of our Constitution, and he did tremendous work in advancing legislation to create the Charter of Rights. He shaped our banking sector and financial sector, our urban development, our trading and education system, our tourism and agriculture. In fact, there is scarcely any area of national life that he did not either initiate, shape, or advance in some way. Edward Siaga spared nothing in giving himself entirely to the people he represented. He never shirked in the task of building Jamaica, the land where he belonged and to which he devoted his whole life. He has left an enormous legacy on which all of us, from whatever calling, from whichever side of the aisle, all of us must continue to build. Our national landscape will miss the strength of conviction and the willingness to engage that was typical of Edward Philip George Siago. Edward Siaga was Jamaica's fifth Prime Minister, serving from 1980 to 1989. He represented the constituency of West Kingston from 1962 until his retirement from active politics in 2005. The former statesman passed away on May 28 at age 89. A state funeral has been planned for noon on Sunday, June 23 at the Cathedral of the Most Holy Trinity, after which Mr. Siaga will be interred at the National Heroes Park. Several traffic changes have been instituted for Kingston to accommodate the state funeral of former Prime Minister Edward Siaga. South Camp Road and East Queen Street and all roads leading on will be closed to regular vehicular traffic from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. This corridor will be used exclusively by VIPs and other mourners attending and leaving the funeral. Persons traveling East Queen Street or Victoria Avenue from the direction of the sea and intending to use South Camp Road will not be allowed to do so. Meanwhile, North Street between South Camp Road and Church Street and all roads leading on will be closed to vehicular traffic. Access will only be given to motorists attending the funeral. East Street will be closed between North Street and South Hero Circle and all roads leading on. The authorities have also advised that Duke Street between Charles Street and South Hero Circle and all roads leading on will be closed to vehicular traffic. This corridor is designated as the continuation of the official route for the funeral procession from the church to the south gate of Heroes Park. Morasco Road between Caledonia Road and Duke Street at South Heroes Circle will be used to shuttle mourners from National Heroes Park to the church and so will be closed to regular vehicular traffic. Shuttle buses will be pre-positioned at the National Heroes Park to transport mourners between there and the church who bear yellow, black and white stickers. In other news, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, has secured a partnership that will give farmers access to up to $350,000 in loans. RADA signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Tuesday with the Community and Workers of Jamaica Cooperative Credit Union Limited, CNWJ. It makes provision for the farmers to take up loans with interest rates ranging from 20 to 32% per annum on the reducing balance. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw says it seeks to provide farmers with the opportunity to expand production and productivity. It should also give them economic space to employ climate-smart practices, advance packaging for marketing of their produce, and maintain standards, quality, and reliable yield for their farms. These loans must not be treated in any flippant way. 
They must be treated with great responsibility, right? And uh, we have to use the opportunity as well, especially through RADA and our own incentive program, to try to get technology into the hands of our, of our farmers as quickly as possible. Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, says plans are in place to establish health centers of excellence at the University of the West Indies to focus on cardio care, neurology, and mental illness. Following this, he says, will be the establishment of clinics for cancer and kidney failure in Kingston and Montego Bay, for which equipment are being procured. On the curative side, quickly, we're promoting five centers of excellence in Jamaica that we feel are important to deal with the crisis that we face on the NCD front. Uh, the major cause of death, uh, cancer, renal failure, uh, as I said, cardiovascular disease, mental illness, major debilitating process, disease. So what we've basically done and are doing is developing oncology and nephrology the minister was speaking at this week's 8th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference. He appealed to the diaspora to invest in the local health sector, pointing out that there were numerous investment opportunities ready for takeup. And finally, over 80 million US dollars has been spent to renovate the Zion Hill Primary School in Manchester under the Japanese government's grant assistance for grassroots human security project. In collaboration with the National Education Trust, students and teachers of the institution are enjoying a reconstructed ICT room, playing field, a paved driveway, perimeter fencing and drainage system. The children here at Zion Hill with the new ICT lab and their play field will be able to access quality education, quality learning opportunities. And so it is imperative that we embrace the, the gifts that have been given to the school and allow our children to benefit. The children, of course, are our future. And to secure that future, we must ensure that we provide quality learning opportunities. Japanese Ambassador Hiromasa Yamazaki says the project aims to empower Jamaicans to achieve sustainable development. From today onwards, Tangible support is being provided for every young boy and girl who come to uh, this noble institution of learning daily. By extension, everyone in the community will also benefit, especially from the use of the ICT room to foster uh, their con continued learning and empowerment of Endeavor. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.